So just a quick video today. These are um, our resin skips and I was painting these for a customer and I got a spare one so I thought I'd uh, quickly show you how I paint them and rust them up because uh, we have rust and everything as you know. Uh, grey primer, I'm using grey primer because we're going to finish it in a yellow uh, top coat and the yellow doesn't have the best coverage in the world um, and it would struggle with black. I've tried it before, it takes about five or six coats before um, I can get good coverage on that. So grey it is, this is the Vallejo primer as you saw and this is uh, a particularly exciting part of the video because I'm spraying a grey primer onto a grey model. So um, you can't really see anything really, I could be spraying it in water for all you know, but I promise you there is primer in there. And I'm just going to give this one coat and just leave it a little while dry, probably not long enough, uh, but I just wanted to quickly do this video today. Top rails, do the inside as well. You can take as much care as you need on the inside because you, if you've got a load in there you may not even want to paint the, uh, the inside at all. But just in case this one's going to be empty, uh, we'll, uh, I'll colour it in as well. Right, so uh, the top coat is yellow. This is, um, I think it's called Deep Yellow. Like that. Um, I'll put the link down below for this one. Uh, not, as I say, the best uh, coverage, but maybe that's typical of these sort of brighter colors, I don't know. Uh, I always seem to struggle with this. I may look for a different, um, a different shade or a different brand after this one. But it's gonna get, um, Two coats. Uh, I'm going to spray them fairly quickly. Just let it dry for a couple of minutes. I want to do some more. Oh, that's my uh, my glove that's in focus there. It's quite difficult to paint these anyway. Um, it's even worse to do it and try and get an angle to show everybody. So uh, thanks for sticking with us. So again, we're going to go around the top, and I'm going to do all the inside again, like I said before because these could be left empty on someone's layout. Oops. Okay, so we'll let that dry um, for a little while. Um, and then we're gonna use uh, our favorite oil brush your oils to uh, get some rust streaks. These are normally battered um, to bits, as you know, because yeah, they get used and people throw bricks in them and all sorts of stuff. So we can use um, the oil brush. These are already pre-mixed, um, so we, we, the, we're not gonna use the brush that comes with it, it's much too big. So we've got the, uh, the oils on one side and then um, the thinner on the other side. And we'll use that in a moment. First thing we're going to use a size two brush, and we're just going to dot on small amounts of the uh, the rust coloured oil. And you need to brush the dots on in the place where you want the the rust streaks to begin. So it's going to get a bit battered around the edge and. Uh, along the, the lower um, edge and there may be a scratch there. And we're going to go all around the model doing the same on every panel. Now this may look a bit hideous, uh, just these dots, but um, hopefully the next stage will make that look a little bit better. quite difficult as you probably know to um, to make things look random because it doesn't seem to be um, yeah random is very difficult I think you can always add or, or take away more or less oil um, as you go if you don't like it take it off start again I'll just add a few more. I'm going to do uh, around the top as well. 
and also inside because the tops would get pretty bad as well where people throw things and they nail on the side so there's going to be quite a bit of rust around the tops and inside as well so I typically just put these down the uh, put a sort of a dot uh, a large dot at the tops of the uh, tops of the corners oops there we go out of focus again and a few dots on the side anywhere you think that the uh, the runs are going to appear we'll leave that so we'll leave this for about 10 or 15 minutes and it's um the old dots have just uh, dried just enough for us to now work on them so we're using the brush which is dipped in thinners and you can see we wiped it off made it all uh, fairly dry and then we're going to drag each dot as we go so touch very gently on the dot and then drag um, straight down to the bottom top to bottom completely vertical because that's the way that the the rust would normally run once the, the rain gets to it it would uh, just run down the side of your skip in this case or whatever it is you're rusting the bits at the top I didn't want them to be sort of a run they just kind of a blotch of um, of a rust so I've just really put a, a drop of thinners on there and let it seep around and, and find its own place We need to do this on all the sides of course so uh, we'll just go again with that slight different angles this might be a bit more useful to see now we're just going to use the one color so this is just normal rust color from the uh, oil brush range there's lots of different shades of browns and uh, yellows oranges and um, any color you choose really Rust is normally made up of more than one shade. We're just going to do a simple version here. But if you uh, want some real old and aggressive rust, you may want to use dark browns in the middle uh, or even purple, which looks quite uh, quite nice. Now, if you're going to do a second color um, on the rust then you'd need to let the first layer, um, the first colour dry completely so you'd need to leave it for a day really before you start again otherwise as you put on the next um, next shade of rust and then you bring your um, your moist brush to that um, you'll actually reactivate this colour as well, the, you know, the original rust and uh, things will go a bit, a bit weird so just let it dry properly if you need to about a day maybe at the most on, on with the oil brush is already thinned if you don't like anything that you've done you can just get a clean um, brush with your thinners and just basically take the whole lot off and start again and if you want to reapply it just wait for the thinners to dry uh, it doesn't take long and then you can, uh, you can start again so the top rails we're not going to have runs they're just um, blotches and, and scabs of, of rust so we're just going to touch that in and then the inside as well it, it is difficult to uh, with this particular shape anyway because we're inside is to actually try and to drag from top to bottom but there's going to be bits in this particular one I know so I'm not too fussy, it's just, uh, just for effect. I'm not particularly liking that bit, so I may go back to that in a minute, I think I do.
you'd obviously take a bit more time with your own models this one is uh, just for just for us just to demonstrate using the oils really So that's that bit finished, and the last uh, stage is to add some uh, some weathering powders. This is our Humbrol Dark Earth, uh, the one that I, I sort of favour. I use that for most things at the moment. It's quite a nice shade. This just adds um, like a bit of definition to the bottom of the um, skip, as if it's been sitting in the road and the the rain has splashed up the mud. It's just got a bit dirty at the bottom. And I've decided that I don't like the uh, that patch of rust there. It's a bit awful. So uh, we can use our thinners and just reactivate that. And uh, we're just going to blend it in just a little bit more. When it dries, it will uh, will look different anyway. Um, but that's good enough for our purposes. And the final bit, just to add some effect, is we're going to add some bits of rubbish in. Um, I've got a box of whole bits of pieces that um, I painted didn't work out right or they've, they've been misprinted um, for this very purpose. So thanks for watching again today. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, please do subscribe. I click the bell icon and then uh, you'll get notified every time we put a new video up. And we'll see you soon.